programmatic TV. We've talked about it for a number of years. Where does it stand now? What's your offering? What's the real ask from your customers? Yeah, so it's an interesting one, Andy, and I think it's it's really exciting about where we are in the kind of the ecosystem at the moment. Um, but there's also a significant number of challenges that we're trying to work through. So, at Freewheel, I'm responsible for the digital side of our our programmatic marketplace business. So that's everything from desktop up to set up to set top box VOD, and it's an interesting time because if you look at each of those platforms, they're kind of different levels of maturity in terms of the, I think, kind of ease or liquidity of, of programmatic transactions. And there are different challenges across each of them. So we have a number of publishers that have you know, premium desktop inventory that they've been transacting programmatically. And the challenge there ends up being less about making sure the pipes are connected and making sure there's audience, but more about how do you differentiate kind of what is premium video in an ecosystem that's broader that has a lot of kind of long tail non-premium video and how do you surface the right information and package that inventory up so that advertisers um, can kind of find that inventory that that meets their needs and um, ultimately um, really extracts more value from the inventory. Then you have on the other end of the spectrum like the set-top box VOD or OTT platforms. So uh, set-top box VOD all the pipes aren't even connected yet. We're still at that stage of uh, enabling dynamic ad insertion in those platforms so that you can even um, engage in programmatic transactions. You know, OTT devices, it's a little bit better, um, but there's still very limited measurement in those environments. So the value chain is really trying to work out kind of the right business operational and technological solutions. And they're all progressing across different platforms at different rates. So we have a kind of a fragmented world a fragmented world in terms of kind of viewership, but also very fragmented in terms of capabilities. And I think everyone sees the opportunity um, at the end of the road, but over the course of the next year to two years, we'll have the opportunity really as um, kind of enablers of the ecosystem to, to sort through those challenges and make it a reality. And uh, Neil, I want to ask you the ancient question of uh, open versus private marketplaces. We've talked about this for years. Where does that stand? Uh, of course, you guys, uh, have very much a premium uh, customer base, but where does that stand and what's the attitude towards open? Yeah, so that's an interesting one as well, Andy. So I think if you look at our customer base exactly as you described, m most of those organizations um, view programmatic as a transaction model. So they have still direct digital sales teams that are going to go out and, and try to monetize their inventory, whether that's through traditional IOs or through programmatic channels. And when they're doing it through programmatic channels, they're definitely gravitating more to private marketplaces. You know, there's still a person on the other end that they have a relationship with, and they're looking for unique things about that inventory to match up with their brand's objectives. Um, you know, we do see publishers start to dabble in the more open world, um, but it's done using as kind of much control as possible as to you know, what inventory is made available and what information about that inventory is made available. You know, I think one of the challenges that we get is that as we move into a world where there's more OTT device inventory, um, when you make that inventory available in a fully open market, those open markets are really designed for um, publishers and buyers that don't have relationships. So the buyers need to understand as much about the inventory as they can to decide what it is, um, whether they want to buy it, and then how much they'd be willing to pay for it. If you don't have all of those kind of audience measurement capabilities that you can pass, the buying in an open marketplace um, you know, is, is much more difficult. So you know, we're seeing some success with desktop there, but really for the platforms that are emerging, that almost has to be sold through private marketplaces today. If you look at premium publishers, um, how do you see sort of the continuum of their direct sales operation along with sort of a, a programmatic solution. And I know it's, it's hard to generalize, but what are some of the trend lines? Yeah, so you know, first, it varies. But I think some of the, the trends that we see are you know, programmatic transactions really just becoming a transaction type um, that the direct sales can use. Um, one of the things that we see emerging in programmatic is, is programmatic guarantees, where you kind of take the idea of a traditional upfront deal that's executed on an IO basis, we just run it through a programmatic pipe. And I think as we see our publisher sales teams going out and selling those deals, you know, the economics are, are not all that, that dissimilar from the IO-based transactions. 
um, when you start applying some of the additional capabilities of the programmatic world, such as you know, the ability to access data and data sets owned by different parties, you know, that also has uh, an impact on the, on the value of inventory. Um, you know, we also see publishers who, um, you know, in certain situations, make certain inventory available to certain partners um, you know, on a non-guarantee basis at price points that are um, you know, probably less compared to what they're selling directly just because of the supply and demand imbalances, but they're doing that with a limited set of partners and a you know, very um, a tough consideration of what the economics should be in that, for that type of inventory. Cool, and, and finally, where do you think this conversation will be when we get together this time next year? Yeah, so hopefully when we're talking about programmatic, it's, you know, it, it's a lot less fragmented in terms of the capabilities that exist across these different platforms. And hopefully we will have kind of gotten over some of the basic measurement um, challenges that exist on those platforms. And we're really starting a conversation that's more about convergence, you know, how the most premium inventory is gonna come together with linear inventory um, so that you know, both publishers can monetize it as a unified pool, but also marketers can access their you know, kind of target audience across any screen that they're watching premium video. So I think we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully be there next year, and I think that Freewheel, um, both on the digital side and the linear side, um, is in a great position to, to make that happen for the ecosystem.